Hi. So, let me tell you guys a story. Back when I was living in a classist society, wait, I'm kind of still living in a classist society, but uh, back when I was in a different classist society, three years ago in Pakistan, my family had a driver. Well, many drivers actually. Most of those drivers lasted no more than two weeks. One dude actually crashed our car, and not just once, but twice. <laughs> Another one left to a different city, another one ghosted us. So basically our luck with drivers ran short. So for the most part, my high school glory days consisted of being that one friend who had a car. Until one day, I was driving back home blasting 18 by Khalid on the day of my 18th birthday. Cliche, yes, I know. When I saw Hood standing in my driveway, he was the next driver that was coming in for a little test run. He must have done a great job because from that day forward, Hood became our last driver. So this is the story of Hood, the strange, smiling Sindhi man who cooked flowers for us, brought home boxes of dates from his village for us, would go on late night lassi runs with us, we'd have Ludo tournaments that lasted till dawn, going on chai runs. The man who we introduced to our own friends, who then also became his friend, a loyal guy who covered for us when we needed to go somewhere else and we told our parents something else. So I guess that's a bit of a glimpse of what our relationship with Hood looked like. This isn't the story of Hood, our driver, but rather the story of Hood, our friend. Anyway, if you've been here a while, I'm just gonna apologize in advance because you've probably <laughs> heard this a million times, but I moved to Dubai and that meant Hood goodbye. Before leaving to Dubai, who told me that I should visit his village someday? And without really putting much thought into it, I told him that I would. That little sentence became a commitment that stuck with Hood. And so despite being in Dubai, we always remained in touch and he kept telling me that I needed to return to see his village. So me being the person that I am, I could not refuse a potential adventure. And so the next thing you know, I'm back in Karachi, waking up at 4 a.m. Ready, Hood? Ready. To get on an eight hour long road trip into the depths of interior sin.
कौन है कोई नहीं है देखो देखो कोई क्यों होगा बाहर से लॉक था When we finally arrived, Hood gave us a little tour. He took us to the many little homes that were made of sand bricks and flax roofs. Each hut designated for its own purpose, like rooms but spread out as small houses. He took us to the family animals where we got to touch cows. Um <laughs> We're having a moment with the cow. <laughs> oh. Hold a goat that was just born a few hours ago. I know what is that. We are big at the way. See chicks that didn't turn into breakfast but might become lunch another day. Saw a sad donkey. Met some more goats. <laughs> My favorite part about this whole experience was just how excited Hood was to show us around his village. He introduced us to his wonderful, ginormous family. They were so sweet and welcoming, and no one let us leave their house without chai. So by the end of the day, we were probably ten cups of chai in, and still forcing it down because they just wouldn't let us leave without giving us something. <laughs> After hanging out with Hood and his family at the village, lunchtime finally came around, and all I can say is it was fresh, extremely fresh. You pack any little thing? Ah, oh, 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 and so we caught, cooked, and shared a meal all together. Huth always spoke of his home at his village extremely highly. He took so much pride in the place that he came from. He told us that whenever he comes home, he thinks about how he was once a kid here too. Playing, running, spending time with animals. He always spoke of his childhood with light in his eyes. Family is Hood's core value. And he would do anything for the people that he calls his family. So as a young boy with old parents and many brothers and sisters, he was forced to grow up fast. So he took the responsibility upon himself and went into the city to make money for his family. Hood's village in Kherpur is his home. It's the one place that he can always come back to for a sense of grounding. And I relate to Hood. And to a large extent, I believe most of us do. Hood seeks family and the people around him because family is home. Where there is family, there is a home. And where there is home, there is comfort. Away from home, we find our chosen families to keep us grounded. But there's nothing like going back to the place that you belong and feeling it wrap you in a warm embrace. Seeing Hood go back to his home honestly made me think of myself and what home means to me. And I think it's beautiful how we're all so different and we all have different stories, but fundamentally, we all feel the same things. This was no sob story made to provoke pity for those less privileged, nor was this a story to compare life in the village to our own lives. 
This was a story about friendship, a rather odd and unexpected friendship that I had with Hood, a goofy, simple, lovable character who invited me to come see the place that he loves most, his home at the village. The recent floods in Pakistan claimed more than 1,500 lives. Today, the Prime Minister said these were the worst floods in the country's history. The floods have destroyed 45% of Pakistan's croplands. More than a third of the country could still be submerged. The food supply has also been endangered. The water is coming from all sides. For millions, home is now the side of the road. Half a million homes have been damaged. In Sin province, north of Karachi, farmers rescue what's left of their corn. Around 700,000 head of cattle drowned during the floods alone. More than 1,150 people are dead. 15% of the population is affected. And in the middle of it all are people growing more desperate by the day.